Good morning and welcome to Coffee Talk. It's Coffee Talk Tuesday. Gosh, my days are all mixed up. Okay, so my necklace is traveling around my neck here. And it's like killing me. It's my Jersey necklace. I'm thinking of everybody in New Jersey. There's a crazy fire in New Jersey that is burning out of control. At least it was last night when I went to bed. Um, I think I heard like a thousand acres of the pine of the pines have been burned. Um, so I'm thinking of my home state, praying for all the firefighters up there. Um, so I got an email from a woman who said, you may not remember me, but I met you in an airport in Los Angeles about eight years ago. And I immediately knew who it was. What a small world it is. So I have to tell you this story. So I am in Los Angeles airport. It's packed. It's like 6.30 in the morning on a Monday, which is mm, legitimately the worst time to be at LAX. <clears throat> so I'm waiting online to check, like, I don't know, check in or my bags or something. I was weighing my bag maybe. And um, there was like lines of people behind me to check in and I hear like this sniffling and I turn around and there's a woman a few years older than me crying in line but like the saddest cry not like crying because she's angry at somebody crying because clearly her heart is breaking so I look at her she won't make eye contact with me I look around at all the people online. No one's making eye contact with her. So I'm like, great. And I'm talking to the woman and I say to the woman at um, Delta or Continental, whoever I was flying at the time. And I say, do you see that woman? She's, you know, should I say something to her? And the woman was like, no. And immediately I thought, why my, my, inner voice is suggesting that I extend myself to this woman. Why do I need someone else to like justify that for me or validate it for me? Why am I asking this woman who's now telling me no, not to utilize the human connection or extend kindness? She's saying no, my, my own business. But I tend to believe that if you are crying in public it is everybody's business. Your heart then becomes everybody's business. So I step out of line, you know, I step away from the counter and I walk up to the woman who's in the front line and I say to her, hey, you all right? You okay? She won't answer me. She's just hunched over sobbing and I, you know, I've seen that cry a few times in my life. It's not, this isn't like someone forgot to pack my lunch cry. So I put my hand on her and her whole body jerks. And she finally looks at me. It was like she saw me. And I go, hey, are you okay? Are you all right? She shakes her head no. So I go, what can I do? And she just the crying got worse. It was that cry of like, you can't do anything. And I know that cry. So now I start becoming panicky because I don't like when other people are that distraught, right? So I look at the woman, at, at, you know, that was helping me and I'm like, so we get her off the line and bring her up to the front. She comes to my spot and everyone's just staring at her. And I think, how do you see somebody crying like that next to you online and not even try, right? I guess, would I have tried 15 years ago? I don't know. When I was in my darkest place, I may have found her emotion unsettling because I, I, wasn't, I wasn't expressing emotion like that when I was in my darkest place, so I may have found her kind of unsettling, but... I would like to think I was human enough to say something, but I, I can't guarantee that I was. Anyway, we finally get it out of her that her father had had 
like a brain aneurysm out of nowhere. And was not expected to make it. And she was desperately trying to get on a flight to go see her father before he passed away. Well, did she find the right friend for that or what? Because, you know, I lost my dad and I am so sensitive to that. And that it was made perfectly clear to me why those cries were, what, why it was those kinds of cries. Anyway, we get her all taken care of. The gate agent, the flight, the whatever they call them, the ticket woman walks us to security, takes us through security. And I walk with this woman to her gate to make sure that she gets there. Um, which she does and they make sure that she gets on the flight and I hug her and say, um, you know, at that point I'm crying because I know the dad cry. I know that cry. And when other people cry it, I recognize it. I'm more sensitive to it. The way that I am in a restaurant when a baby cries, I'm like, who needs me to hold their baby so they can eat? I will. Um, Anyway, long story short, I go to my gate and of course my eyes are all puffy and I'm telling some woman next to me, he's like, you're right. I'm like, see, so we start talking about the human connection and I explain what happened and she's like, oh, you're a good soul. I go, really? The sad part is, is that that should be the norm. It should be the norm where one of us is distraught or needs help. In the way that I was sending up, you know, a red flag in Babies Are Us eight years ago. Um, and Scarlett stopped to help me. And it's one of the greatest love stories ever told between two women. Scarlett saw me in distress and extended herself. And because of that one act, she is one of my best friends in the whole world. And... I tell her I love her every single day and I can't get enough of her. And we raise children together and our husbands are friends and because of a simple act of kindness. So long story short, I never saw this woman again. But because of coffee talk, somebody shared one of my videos and she saw it and went, hey, that's the girl when my dad died, blah, blah, blah. So she wrote me a message. And she said, I just want you to know that I'm so proud of you. And I'm like, oh, I love that. I love that. I share this with you because what we do makes a difference. What we do for other people matters. When we extend ourselves, when we extend kindness and we practice the human connection, it matters to people. It, we may not save the world. Right? What's that saying? To the world, you may be one person, but to one person, you may be the world. That's it. That's all that matters is, is what effect are we having on our small space around us? Because if we affect individuals positively, they will go out and affect other individuals. And those individuals will do the same. And it will become like a tidal wave of kindness. I love it. Um... Anyway, if you see somebody in need, if you see somebody in distress, if you see somebody lost in a Babies or Us, extend yourself because you never know what will come of it. I'm, I'm having a great morning. I love you today. Have a great day.